Well, run light. How's that? Uh, yes, sir. Welcome to the first annual Treasure Divers Seminar. I'm glad everybody could come. Next time, bring friends. Um, bring people you just barely met. Uh, but I think we're going to be able to help some folks out. There's a little history here, a lot of history, um, a lot of technique. Um, I'm a firm believer in education and reading because if you spend ten dollars or twenty bucks on a book or a class and learn that one thing, if you find one extra coin or you make your operation five percent more efficient, um, this deal is all about efficiency. Woo! Um, you have to, in order to get your production up, you just have to be more efficient. And that goes from setting up the boat, that goes from loading the boat, uh, making sure you've got all your stuff at the dock, on time, uh, make sure that the boat works, for God's sake. That's, uh, <laughs> that's been, there are several people here who can attest to the fact that it's, uh, you can think you're going to be ready in January and be ready in July. Uh, and that, that seven months is, is lost production. And, you know, it's not all about the coins. It's really all about the history and the artifacts. Um, you can talk to Taffy or Jonah or Tom or Steve or anybody. <clears throat> Nobody says, you know, I found this. The best thing I ever found was a coin. Um, a lot of the Atosha divers were fans of you know, their Their favorite thing were the rosaries. Um, 900 silver bars, it's right up there, but still the, you know, the history of what we do um, is there's some connection all the way back to, to uh, the day of the shipwreck. The first day of salvage was the day after the wreck. Um, but I'll talk some more later, uh, incessantly no doubt. But what we're going to do, there are kind of our, our format. It's going to be, we'll, uh, somebody will talk, we'll answer some questions after, uh, then uh, we'll set up, have another presenter, and do a question and answer session uh, all the way through the day. Then the last thing till, till I run everybody out will be uh, question and answer. But please kind of keep your conversation down so everybody can hear what's being said. Uh, this is basically a classroom. And lucky for us, in our classroom, we have Taffy Fisher at right there at the back, and she's going to walk all the way back up here and do our introduction and tell us a little bit about life. And uh, we're also going to talk about what we need to do to try to stop the people that are trying to stop uh, us from working. So Taffy, if you'd like, if you'd like to. Uh, Yes, I swear. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. Today's the day. Hey. <laughs> uh, so, um, this is a great turnout for a first time. And um, I'm glad to see all y'all here. And um, I know that there's a lot of new electronics and things like that, but all I can say is keep a paper mat. Keep a paper chart, print it out, just in case your computer goes down. You want to know where to dig next. You want to have your records, back it up. Or have at least have a laptop that you can turn on that has all your same map stuff in it. So uh, paper maps are still a good thing. It's so much fun having a treasure map. Paper one you can show people, you know. It's a good way to uh, get investors, too. They like to look at treasure maps. <laughs> more fun than looking at a computer screen. But man, the computers are the way to go today. Keep track of the data. Um, <clears throat> so right now we're fighting the government again. You know, I think it's just gonna be, I think it's my legacy is to uh, just keep fighting the government, trying to keep uh, one step ahead. We have to have good technology and good archeology span and a good attitude and we will prevail. So, with that said, I have a 
petition if you haven't signed it online, which probably a lot of you already have. Say no to Noah. They're trying to expand their sanctuaries and all their regulations down the Florida Keys right now. It's just making it worse and worse all the time. And they're um, you know, making sanctuaries all over, California, North Carolina, Michigan. Uh, so wherever you want to treasure hunt next, they might be there. So just say no now and help us fight them now and we'll help you fight them wherever you're going to. So sign the petition if you need more information, let me know. Make sure you stop in the museum. There's some uh, brochures over there with coupons on so you get a, uh, I'm trying to call my daughter to get y'all free admission, but you gotta go today. So you gotta take one of those brochures and uh, have Bill Black uh, autograph it, and then you get him free today. They'll probably give you a discount too on some treasure. <laughs> so uh, keep hunting and uh, keep doing good technology and do archaeology and find a bunch of gold. All right? Today's day. Speaker, but I told him, I said, Well, if you want me to talk, I'll talk. I can talk as long as you want. <laughs> My I'm a good talker. Anybody got any questions? See, look, they all know everything I know. I, you know, I, I, uh, I do have an actual slideshow that I do for mainly for um, like local groups like Rotary Clubs and things like that. And I, uh, I do it for free, but I don't like to travel too far, I like to stay close to home. But I usually ask for a donation for our Have a Heart Foundation, which a lot of you know about. We put AEDs in schools and teach um, CPR to teachers and coaches. And um, we also uh, do heart screenings on youths now. So um, that's another thing that we advocate for. So we take donations when I do slideshows. So if any of you are in a group that might want to hear me talk for half an hour or an hour about treasure hunting in my history with my family and my dad and all of our, some of our adventures. I'd be happy to do that, just let me know. Um, yeah. Yeah, Kathy, can you, can you tell us basically when um, you decided to automate the match? Well, when I moved up here from Key West in 89, um, the records were a mess. We had uh, all of our records boxed up on the Spanish Galleon reproduction in Key West that sank in 1980, so we lost our records. So I was kind of starting from scratch, and the computer I had at the time was brand new and had a five inch floppy disk. And I only had a little bit of memory. So, I mean, you know, I only had three fields, and it was rec site, boat name, and what they found because that's all the memory I had. And as computers progressed, then about, it was probably about 1995 when I decided, you know what, I should make, because a lot of people keep saying, well, what's left? So they will never get it all, I'll tell you that. Plus, we don't know how much contraband, over 100% contraband in addition to what was listed. So, so, well, let's find out what we found and make a record of everything that's been found. So I called the state and I said, hey, send me copies of all your log sheets. Because they had, you know, duplicates of everything. They said, we have like 100 boxes in the attic. And I said, okay, well, take two of them to Kinko's and uh, have them copy them. I'll set up an account with my credit card. They'll ship them to me and they'll call you when they're done. And then you can pick those two boxes up and bring two more until I got all hundred of them. <laughs> Just put a big X. That means Taffy got it. So then we got all those hundred boxes of copies and we sorted them out by years. They weren't in any order. Year, and boat, and date, and all that. And did the data entry, you know, of everything ever found. And that was the initial thing was, what's been found? Then I went, man, I should have put in where it was found. So then we went back and did all of the data location. And then I said, ah, should have put in the empty holes too, you know? So we went back and put in all the empty holes. 
And then, you know, I took a lot of uh, work with Bill Moore, who was working for me at the time, um, who, by the way, has probably found more gold than anyone else ever in one spot. He found a big pile of gold bars on the Atocha. Um, it probably took us about three years to do all the data entry and all the math and calculations we had to get the state of Florida to tell us where they put the beach markers. And it was all handwritten scribbled things from um, Bakery and I um, can't remember the other guy's name off the top of my head. But you know, two statement, two or three statement, you basically came down every year and put up beach markers. And they measured from DNR markers, but a lot of times they couldn't put them in the same place because it was overgrown or they couldn't find the old spot couldn't get to it for some reason, somebody built a house maybe, so they would move it. So every single year, every site had different markers in different places. So we had to have different calculations for every year, every site. And it, uh, so it was very complicated, but we got it done. That was the beginning, about 1995. Thank you. <laughs> We provide more and collect more than than they ask for already. We always have. You know, we're staying one step ahead. Yeah. Well, you're going to hear about some really cool stuff right now that's kind of state of the art in this industry. Uh, with with the next lecture, I think. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I started out with, I was using so many programs. Ours was all homemade, and it was a combination of Microsoft, Office, Word, Access, Excel. Um, there was one, I, I wanna say government program, I'm not sure, it's been a surveying program. I can't remember the name of it. And then AutoCAD, I loved AutoCAD. But AutoCAD's really complicated for most people and it's very expensive. Uh, but we use a combination of all of those programs to make what we did work. Um, I don't think you have to get into all that today. It's not that complicated. I think databases are very important for the data. Because uh, in Excel, Excel is more user friendly, but you can mix your data up by accident very easily. So I really recommend drop down menus if you know how to use them. That way you'll have less error, more uniformity. Like ballast is always spelled the same. It's like everybody does uh, spells archaeology different. <laughs> you know, and uh, so. Consistency, having a drop down menu so that you have consistency is important. <coughs> There's so many ways to say the gold wreck, which, you know, see, I guess today is called Douglas Beach. I mean, originally it was, and this, I'm not trying to be, you know, rude, but it was Nigger Beach, and that's what Momo called it, Nigger Beach. And then, um, they got more politically correct and they called it colored beach. So in the original records it was NIG because they only had enough room for three characters. Then it was um, color beach, so it was COL. And then there was this fight about, well, who got which section because of some new legal thing. So we separated it into north color beach and south color beach. So then it was NCB and SCB, and then there's this middle area that they were arguing about, so okay, now we have the MCB for middle color beach, and then it went to Douglas Beach, so then it was North Douglas Beach, Middle Douglas Beach, South Douglas Beach, and now it's just Douglas Beach. So, I mean, there's 10 different codes for one wreck site. So, it's the gold wreck. More gold. What it really is. Yeah, more gold's been found there, I think, than anywhere else. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay.
Hi. Um, all this incredible work you've done, is that data available to anybody, or how does that work? We have a free online database that you don't even have to put your email address in to get to it. But I haven't got the 1715 data in yet. Uh, some of it's there. Um, it won't include lat longs. It won't include dollar values or point values. And it won't include who got it in the distribution. But if you wanted to just do research, say, on how many buckles have ever been found on the 1715 fleet, you could get a report of that. Um, it's almost there. I'm cleaning up the data because there's a lot of doubles. Um, back in the old days, they used to just take a bucket and put it on the back of the boat, and all day long, whenever they bring up a pottery shark, they'd throw it in the bucket and say, okay. And at the end of the day, they'd say, tag number three is a bucket of 50 sharks. <laughs> so that wasn't really helpful as far as mapping, you know. Especially as sometimes they work two sites in a day. So maybe some of those pottery shirts were <clears throat> Douglas Beach and some were cabin wreck. But you know, things change, we learn, we progress. So I'm trying to clean up the data as much as I can. It's not going to be 100% accurate. Um, I think if you're working on the 1715 fleet under a contract, whoever is in charge of the location data would be happy to share that with you because they want you to find treasure. They want you to be successful because that's good for them, it's good for all of us. Um, so I don't think it's a secret, I mean we don't put it out there for the general public, the locations. Right, thank you. A researcher could come and, and study it, you know, if they were doing a research project and wrote me a letter, I, I work with, I talk to people, I don't care, you know. <laughs> Okay, anybody else? Okay, should I hand the program over to the boss? He'll be here a little bit. Today's the day. Today is the day, Devin. Thank you very much.